Good morning. I'm Pastor Michelle. Welcome to Renton United Methodist Church. Today we are all worshiping together online from our homes, and I am so glad that you are here. Today we celebrate Epiphany Sunday, and we remember the wise men who followed a star for nearly two years before they met Jesus. As we reflect on their journey, we are invited to follow the star and to discover God's love and light shining forth in our world today. Pastor Eliza will lead us in our call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Lift up your eyes, look around and see, sons and daughters of God, gathering from far and wide. Bring your gifts and proclaim God's glory. Bring your gifts and offer them to God in worship and praise. this morning. Loving God, you have come into our world to shine a light of hope into our lives and to bring warmth into the cold of winter. Help us to welcome your light, to be enlightened by it, and to live it each day. In this new year, enable us to be beacons of your light, shining forth with the light of new life in all we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Isaiah 60, 1 through 6. Arise, arise, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, and they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away. Your daughters shall be carried by their nurses' arms. Then. You shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because of the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, 
the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, and the young camels of Mydia and Eva, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the rising, and have come to pay him homage. When king heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, for, for from you shall come a ruler who is so shepherd by people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called him for wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them 
went the star that they had soon had seen in its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We began our worship this morning with a call to worship straight out of our first lesson. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. This is the first Sunday of a brand new year, and it's also Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany is actually on January 6th the day after the 12th day of Christmas. So technically, we still have a few more days of Christmas, which is why my Christmas tree is still up. But notice the tree topper. It's a star. On Christmas Eve, I passed out these 3D glasses. And for those who were worshiping in person, they were able to look through them and they were able to notice that when they looked at a candle or a Christmas tree light, they saw star. And you may remember that I also talked about the wise men who were not quite part of the story that we read on Christmas Eve, but they had already begun their journey and they were following a star. They didn't know where the star would lead them or exactly what would happen once they arrived. But they followed this star with the expectation that they would find a king and they would pay homage. They started their journey from their home countries probably about the time that Jesus was born. They followed the star for nearly two years. They stopped in Jerusalem on their way because a palace seemed like a likely place that they would find a king that they were seeking. Instead, they found another king who was named Herod. When they arrived, and after they told Herod what they knew, the king consulted with the priests and scribes to determine what the prophets had written. And then he talked with the Magi again. He told them what the priests and scribes had told him, that the child would be born in Bethlehem. He sent them on their way, asking them, please, to let him know where the child was so that he, too, could pay homage. Of course, we know from Scripture that was not the desire that Herod had, but actually Herod wanted to kill the child and to eliminate any threat to his throne. The Magi left following the star once again, they found the child, they gave him gifts, and they returned home a different way, listening to God in a dream. Epiphany means to show or shine forth. Epiphany is a Greek verb which translates to be made manifest, to appear openly. The arrival of the Magi was a special sign, an epiphany that God's love was not just for a few people, but was meant for all people. The Magi, remember, were not Jewish. They were outside of the faith, and they were allowed to witness and to experience God's glory. Epiphany begins the day after the 12th day of Christmas, right after we have celebrated God incarnate through Jesus' birth. During the season of Epiphany, we celebrate new beginnings because we remember that God and God's light are always with us. During Epiphany, we reflect on where we experience God in our world because we remember that God continues to walk with us wherever we go. So we are in a brand new year and in a brand new season in our church. We don't know exactly where we're going, but we're following the star. And that star shines forth much like a GPS for us. 
We're following the star to find the child who is in the world with us already. We have new opportunities in a new year to reflect on what was in the past and what our hopes and our dreams are for this new year in front of us. We have opportunities to reflect on what worked in our life in the past and what didn't and to make changes for our future. We have opportunities as a congregation to look up, to see the star, and to follow that star where God is inviting us to travel this year. Long ago in a Calvin and Hobbes cartoon, little Calvin was talking to a stuffed tiger Hobbes, explaining how Calvin was preparing for the new year. Calvin explained that in the new year, many people wrote resolutions which were shallow and didn't mean anything. Calvin's plan was to be helpful to everyone he knew by pointing out their faults so that they could write more meaningful New Year's resolutions. Hobbes gleefully asked Calvin when he would like his list of faults. Calvin told Hobbes, Never. I'm not going to write New Year's resolutions myself. I'm just going to help those who do to write better resolutions. It's a brand new year. I wonder how many of us have thought about writing New Year's resolutions for 2022. The process of creating New Year's resolutions can be helpful. It's a a time where we can take stock of where we are and where we want to go. It can be helpful for us to create a plan from moving where we are to where we hope to be. The challenge is both making meaningful resolutions that will help us to transition or change and move forward and that we will also follow through. Paul Wharton tells a story in his books, his book, Stories and Parables for Preachers and Teachers, about an elementary school principal who late one December before uh, winter break asked the teachers at a staff meeting to write out their New Year's resolutions about how they could be better teachers. He told them he would put them on the staff bulletin board to encourage each other. The teachers all agreed and when all the resolutions were posted they gathered around eagerly to read them. One of the young teachers suddenly went into a fit of anger. He didn't put up my resolution. It was one of the first ones in. He doesn't care about me. That just shows what it's like around here. The principal overheard this from his office and was mortified. He quickly located the missing resolution on his desk, which he did not mean to exclude, and he quickly posted it on the bulletin board. What did this teacher write? I resolve not to let little things upset me anymore. It's a new year, and we have an opportunity to take stock and create meaningful resolutions for places that we might want to make changes so that we're better able to follow that star, to find those places in our world where God's light is shining forth. We know that it's not just enough to make resolutions. We have to also consider how we're going to follow through. One way that we as a faith community begin each year is to reaffirm our commitment to love God and to follow Jesus by sharing together in the Wesley Covenant. And I want to invite you to say the words with me right now, and you will see them at the bottom of the screen. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. 
I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Now that we, as a faith community, have reaffirmed this covenant, I wonder, how will we follow through in 2022? Today, we find New Year's and an epiphany intersected. Arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The Magi followed a star, a light, a celestial sign, and they found the child, and they were overwhelmed with joy. They experienced God's light bursting forth into the world through the light of this child. Today we also begin a brand new year. And we have the opportunity to reflect, to take stock, to make changes. The new year is a clean slate, a time for each of us to start anew, a time for our church to start anew. What would we like to see happen in our life and in our church in this new year? What can we do to help make a path for our church? Are we following the star? My friends, we may not know exactly where we're going, but we do know that if we listen closely and look in the sky for the star, that God will continue to guide us. Our world continues to be a dynamic place. War, terror, violence, natural disaster, and devastating fires. The fire this past week in uh, Colorado and the tornadoes in the Midwest a few weeks ago remind us how quickly our lives can be changed. Our nation continues to struggle with treating those around us as beloved children of God, people of worth. And at the same time, even in our church, in our world, in our nation, and in our community, and in our lives, we know God is with us. There are good things and good people, as well as challenging situations. We are able to see God's light and love reflected in many places, even with all of the challenges. It's a new year, and as we have committed once again to loving God and following Jesus, we have an opportunity to think about our New Year's resolutions, in particular to maybe those places of challenge and how we can help God's light to shine forth and how we can live through and make our resolutions, make the changes in our resolutions so that others are able to see God's light reflected as well. My question is this, are we planning to be more like Calvin and help people to make more meaningful resolutions by helping them to know what they need to know, but not willing to work on ourselves as we're willing to figure out what we can do this year to help reflect God's light in the world? Are we planning to live into our covenant that we just made and remember that we are starting a fresh new year? This week, I want to invite each of us to take a little bit of time to reflect, to take stock, to make meaningful resolutions, to think about places in our life or in our church where we need to make changes, and to really listen closely to the Spirit and where God is calling us so that we are able to look up and to see the star and to follow that star and as we're in the season of epiphany, to reflect God's love and light to others so they also are able to experience God's love and light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. God is with us in the new year. God is with us in the world, and God will continue to lead us forward. And my friends, this is the good news. Amen. of Christ be with you and let us pray creator God give of all blessings we give you thanks for Jesus the light of the world the light that no darkness can overpower and as we celebrate Epiphany we also acknowledge that for many the warmth of your light gets blotted out by the shadows of poverty, loneliness, and war. Help us to reach out to those in the shadows that where light may shine on all and fresh hopes and dreams be kindled. We pray for those who struggle with illness or loss of a loved one. Today we pray especially for members of this congregation who are ill and need help especially in this time of physical isolation. Let us know that you are with us. We pray for kings and leaders in our world that they will perceive that the source of real power comes from within and offer their gifts and humility. Give us insight to recognize the empathies that await us as we follow Jesus in the way of self-giving love. Amen. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. Hello, I'm Andy O'Donnell. A few months ago, Pastor Michelle asked me if I could present the offering moment on the same Sunday when we had our district superintendent, Reverend Derek Nakano, preaching. Unfortunately, on that Sunday, we had some te technical difficulties and as such were unable to include that portion of the worship service in our online presentation. Uh, in light of that, Pastor Michelle asked me if I would be able to present that to you today. As many of you know by now, I am the SeaTac Commissional District Lay Leader. One of the many ways we attempt to connect the laity of our district together, especially in light of the pandemic, is by having monthly events via Zoom where we alternate between the local lay leaders gathering together to share their experiences and ideas around doing church in a new way, 
and then doing more widely targeted workshops on the other months to offer the laity and interested clergy opportunities to learn more about areas of ministry that interest them. This has led most recently to us coming together with surrounding districts in offering an inter-district event at the end of August around lay servant ministries and certified lay ministries, which was well attended and caused us to realize that we have a great opportunity to cast our nets even wider, to have laity throughout our conference come together and is bringing about a renewed sense of energy around how we can continue to offer helpful ways to connect each other together. Thank you. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Invite you to receive the benediction. As the Magi followed the star to Jesus, we follow Jesus as the light of our lives. As Jesus became the servant king, so we become the servant of one another. Arise, shine, for your light has come. May the love of God, the courage of Jesus, and the peace of the Spirit make your lives radiant. Amen.